Welcome back. In 1965, Browning introduced to the world the T-Bolt 22. It was a beautiful rimfire. Uh, it lasted until about 1982 um, when it was discontinued. Browning was at the time having some difficulties with certain issues. Uh, they, had, they had a massive recall on many guns and the 22 uh, series was also affected. It was called, uh, we call it now the salt stock uh, problem, the salt wood problem. Uh, they had they had been using uh, wood that had been cured basically with a salt brine and uh, as uh, time went on uh, the uh, salt began to leach out into the uh, underneath the varnish the varnish would peel um, blister and things got really ugly for browning and they had to recall a lot of those guns uh, whether that was whether that was the reason why the T-bolt 22 uh, fell by the wayside in 1982 is hard to say but it's back and this particular this particular configuration now has got some new changes well first of all this is a triple a grade uh, maple stock I don't know if you can see the figure in this but this this looks like a I mean really it looks like a violin It's so beautiful it's got the uh, tiger stripe fiddle back very iridescent uh, it glistens in the Sun like nobody's business I, I really hope it's uh, I hope you can uh, see that in this uh, video. Um, it was a SHOT Show special for this uh, last year, and uh, it shoots wonderfully. They've, uh, they've actually, it's a glass bedded action and a free floated, and a free floated fore end, if you can imagine that. You know, they did this right. Um, you know, I just recently did the video on the um, Model 70 featherweight well this has got the same this has got the same features built by the same people this is uh, Browning is an FN company Fabrique Nationale uh, this is made by Moroku in uh, Japan uh, who really make they make outstanding rifles uh, and shotguns uh, this particular rifle has got some new features that uh, the previous T-bolt didn't one of the biggest changes is this helix 10 shot rotary magazine it's actually a helical magazine they, the uh, the rounds go in in a somewhat of a figure eight method and there's also a wheel right here that assists in feeding them so you don't have to pinch your thumb uh, to stuff them in you just turn the wheel and just drop them right in place conversely when you want to empty it you don't have to strip them out with your thumb you just simply release this uh, and they drop out it's nice it's a nice system it allows for a, a flush magazine, just like a just like a, a Ruger flush magazine is. Uh, so you can you know you can handle the rifle in a normal way without having the magazine in the palm of your hand. That was always a that was always a problem for any time you wanted to rest your rest your rifle correctly on your palm of your hand in order to get good support. Um, it's got a uh, Tang safety, thumb operated Tang safety right here, which is really positive. Um, the uh, the bolt release is very simple. In order to release the bolt, just place it on safe. Uh, open the bolt partially, depress that bolt release, and then the bolt just slides out very simply. Uh, there's no no com no complex uh, no complexities whatsoever. Um, the bolt it's a cross bolt design if you can see how that drops in place and it engages in both sides of the receiver you can see on this side also it goes all the way through and it really locks it up tight as a drum they've also they've also employed a target chamber in this it's a tight target chamber now that means that there is a limitation. You can't use you can't use certain ammo like Stinger ammunition, which has a case that requires a little bit of uh, insertion into the lead of the uh, rifling. So you you have to stick with you have to stick with standard uh, uh, grade ammunition. Uh, target ammunition certainly is really good in this stuff, uh, but it's a nice trigger. Uh, the trigger is adjustable. This one here happens to be adjustable down to. Just about three pounds, and I've I've measured it, and it's a nice nice trigger. I like to let it go probably another half a pound, which is not attainable with this trigger. But uh, three pounds is a really nice trigger, and especially if you if it's uh, being used by younger 
younger people. This is really an adult rifle. I mean, this is not a cheap. This is not a cheap 22 by any means. Um, it's drilled and tapped. Not this is not grooved for a uh, typical uh, mount for a 22 scope. This is drilled and tapped the same way a centerfire rifle is. I've got loophole um, mounts on it. I've reversed the I reversed the front and the rear. Um, the front and the rear base so that I can have a little bit uh, closer closer uh, eye relief than I had before. Uh, if I turn them around the, the uh, scope moves away from my eye so I prefer to bring it uh, back a little bit. And this is a loophole rim fire uh, scope. Let me talk about that a little bit. Loophole rim fire scopes, any anytime you're dealing with a rim fire rifle uh, you've got a special consideration. Rifles are <coughs> rifles and scopes have to be. Uh, there, there's always going to be a compromise unless you've got an adjustable objective, which is found on high power scopes, not high price, but high power scopes, which also does drive the price up. Uh, and I spoke about this in scopes before about uh, adjustable objectives in in one of my other videos. Um, Parallax, which is the apparent movement of a reticle on the target. In other words, it can fool the eye. If you if you move your eye, just like I'm moving my eye, my my hand stays still. I'm not moving my hand, but it appears that my hand might be moving to my eye. And that's what happens with the crosshairs. If if I'm sighting down range and the parallax adjustment, if the parallax is not set to be parallax free, that is, um, that everything. In other words, the focal planes are. Uh, landing in the same place both visually and where the target is if that's not occurring then by slight movement of the eye pupil uh, you can actually be deceived and place the bullet off target and that leads to uh, gross inaccuracies now that's not a that's not a that's not a big concern when you're talking about uh, you know center fire rifles which you know are used for uh, big game hunting and things like that if you happen to be if you happen to be one inch off at 50 yards or 65 yards, 70 yards or whatever, it's of no real concern uh, in the field. And naturally, and as I've and I've mentioned this before, there's never parallax uh, issues when your eye is situated down the middle of the tube. As long as your eye is uh, down the middle of the scope, there are no parallax issues. But with a rimfire, uh, which is being used for shooting at closer distances. Rather than having the parallax set, as most companies set it to between 100 to 150 yards, Leupold sets their scopes at 150 yards, which is an ideal distance because it's, a, it's, it's the perfect distance for a real life hunting situation. So if any time you're shooting uh, for groups at 100 yards, keep in mind that you must keep your eye perfectly centered down the middle of that tube Otherwise, you can have slight parallax issues that will affect your group size at 100 yards. Um, but that's that's just a marksmanship issue. But when you're talking about a 22 and you want to be able to shoot accurately within the, the, the standard range of a 22, then you mean it means you have to have the parallax set uh, proportionate to the range of the rifle, which in the case of a rimfire 22 scope. Uh, this also can be used on any other rim fires, 17, uh, you know, anything like that, uh, 22 Magnum. But the parallax is set at 65 yards, uh, 60 or 65, I'm not sure. But it's, it's, in other words, it places it very, very close on target at 50 yards and in, and in between at any range closer. So it's vitally important to get a rim fire scope when you're, when you're mounting it on a, uh, on a rim fire rifle. Uh, that's going to be used within uh, shorter ranges. Now, another thing with this particular scope, it's got a very fine crosshairs. They're, they're really, it's a duplex reticle, but they're extremely fine crosshairs. The the outer the outer crosshair, the outer section, the, the thicker section, is about the same thickness as the inner section is on a, a standard center fire scope. So. <clears throat> It's got a fine cross here because you're shooting at finer targets. You're shooting at, you know, you're shooting at really uh, very, very small uh, game, perhaps. You know, you might be shooting at a, at a squirrel's head at uh, 50 yards or something like that. And you need to be able to have a fine cross here that doesn't obscure the target that you're uh, shooting at, which really makes it nice. And the power on this scope is a fixed power 
uh, four. Now I really like a four power scope on a 22 rimfire. Now you'll probably say that contradicts what I say about uh, scopes that inside close ranges you can't you can't pick up a moving target, but it's proportionate to the size of the target really. You know, when you're talking about an animal that's only a squirrel or something that's only that large versus a deer, which is, you know, a couple of feet, three feet long, uh, the, the actual perceived field of view uh, is, is proportionately the same. So in other words, I can, come up on a, I can come up on a squirrel, which is at the top of a tree, and he's going to be easy to find with a four power scope. Uh, and everything is everything is just the way it ought to be. Uh, you really don't. I don't. I don't find any need for a variable power scope on a uh, 22. They're available, um, but you know this is the nice thing about a 22 is that you can you can just practice with it to your heart's content. You can burn up an awful lot of 22s, especially now that they're easily available. Uh, they're back on the market again, and you can do some practice that will you know hone your skills for the big game hunt with your big game rifle without spending lots of money and burning up your burning up your expensive barrel so naturally you want to do some um, practice with your you know, center fire rifles but you don't want to do you don't want to do all your marksmanship practice with your center fire rifles when you can get yourself a nice 22 like this and this is this is the name of the game it's important in order to in order to hone skills you have to have a rifle which really mirrors your uh, your ability and gives you a, a, a satisfaction or confidence in your shooting. You know, the worst thing in the world is to have your crosshairs looking at something, you squeeze the trigger and you know that you called your shot to be dead on and the bullet lands, you know, an inch and a half or two inches away at 25 or 30 yards. That's not a confidence builder because you really don't know what's going on. Uh, the, the, gun should, the, the gun should mirror your own ability. Uh, and this gun does that. This rifle does that beautifully. Um, I've tested it with I've tested it with about 25 uh, different types of uh, you know brands of ammo and different models of uh, yeah, bullet designs and things like that. And I've arrived at a couple that are very consistent and uh, work very nicely um, in this rifle. Uh, the surprisingly, you know, this is a bulk package that I got. In the pre-Obama uh, days, um, and this is the uh, CCI mini mags. This is the promotional box, you know, with with uh, Troy Landry on it, and they really shoot very nicely. They shoot very, very accurately. They shoot about um, well. I would say that they're probably two MOA. In other words, they shoot uh, within within three quarters of an inch at 50 yards. So it's slightly less than two MOA, which is that's pretty nice for a 22. Uh, for especially these are these are high velocity. Uh, they're advertised at the muzzle velocity of 1260, and uh, they've got a. Uh, I'll see the bullet weight on these. I should know 36 grains. So these are, these are, uh, you know, a good hollow point and very, very uh, nice for uh, small game hunting. I've also got some target grade ammunition here. Um, actually, both of them are made by Lapua. I've got some Polar Biathlon. I've tried, I've tried a number of the different uh, Lapua uh, target grade. Uh, 22s and these are standard velocity uh, these happen to be the polar biathlon I've, I've tried the center X and all they all work nicely they all work beautifully uh, so it's really not a consideration buy whichever one you want to buy it's it's uh, it boils down to um, they they essentially they essentially price them according to how much uh, inspection goes on during the manufacture and this is this is some wolf match ammo this box here is actually about oh it's about 18 years old I'm just using up the last of my wolf I I bought some new wolf a little while ago uh, and it shoots just as nice as this um, it's it's made in Germany by the Lapua company it's got the same uh, it's got the same case stamp on the head of the uh, uh, the head of the brass um, it has the same it's kind of a greasy lubricant uh, and you know some people complain that it fouls their uh, auto loaders up and things but uh, you know I used to use this all the time in my uh, 1022 and I never had an issue you just have to understand that they use a somewhat greasy lubricant but um, dynamite accuracy uh, absolutely stunning accuracy 
So what I'm going to do is bring it over to the bench here. We'll do a little bit of we'll do a little bit of accuracy shooting just to show you what the gun's capable of, um, and I'll show you the difference between the the uh, target grade ammo and the um, and the uh, high velocity hunting ammo. And you'll see that the high velocity hunting ammo is beautiful for uh, any any game hunting whatsoever. So you want to go out after rabbits or squirrels or anything like that. Um, you know, or I guess alligators if you want. Uh, nice stuff. Uh, 36 grain bullet. It stays nice and stable out to 50 yards. And if I can, if it doesn't, if it doesn't open up here, I had a sun shower a little while ago. If it doesn't uh, open up, I want to set out. Uh, I want to set out some steel targets, and show you some uh, training techniques that you can use for yourself to help hone your skills. So let's step over to the bench and get this thing going. Well, the wind is very slight. It's just a nice. Uh, puff of a breeze that's uh, moving some of the leaves, some of them are not moving at all. Um, I've, in the last uh, five or ten minutes, the, the wind has gone more or less from this direction, from behind me, to uh, blowing crosswise. Uh, at one point it appeared to be blowing up and down, the smoke was going up and down on me. So, uh, but I don't think any of this is a concern for uh, any market uh, change in accuracy so we're just going to go ahead and shoot now I've taken off my Garand style sling and I say this is not a Garand sling it's a Garand style sling it's uh, virtually the same construction as a Garand sling uh, but it's a one inch web cotton web and uh, uh, cotton I prefer uh, over nylon because it has better it has better tackiness when you're uh, slinging up uh, and the uh, the dog works a lot better. The, the clasp works a lot better and, and uh, stays more stays more solid. So I've taken that I've taken that off. Uh, that, by the way, was only a fourteen dollar. I think I paid fourteen ninety five or something from uh, Tech Sites. If you're looking for if you're looking for one of these, it's from Tech Sites. T e c h s i g h t s Tech Sites. They make uh, nice equipment um, and. I've loaded up my helical magazine here with uh, 10 rounds, and we should be ready to go. Um, I've tried using my uh, my eyeglass. I really, I was somebody reminded me I should be uh, using glasses in my last video, and I I entirely agree. Uh, there's something going on. I just can't wear I can't wear uh, glasses right now without them fogging up so badly that I can't see what's happening. But anyway, I've got a I've got a camera set up down range so you can see the bullets coming into the target, and uh, hopefully this will this will shoot nicely. So I'm going to put the first I'm going to put the first shots toward the uh, upper left target. It should be all sighted in for this particular ammo here. This is the uh, CCI, and by the way, there's something that um, I noticed that when I was shooting CCI mini mags in the plastic box with the uh, standard uh, 40 grain. Uh, the, the 40 grain lead bullet, which is, you know, that's a greater weight than, than these, which is 36 grain. Um, that particular bullet sh shot a little bit, uh, oh, by, by about three quarters of an inch uh, low and to the left, like seven o'clock. Um, so it's, um, it's a little bit different. Every, every uh, ammo that you use should be specifically sighted in for your rifle so you don't have any surprises. Never expect any ammo to you know when you when you're changing brands uh, never expect it to be the same now I'm getting a wind which is coming straight at my back and right at the camera and it's hustling a little bit more but we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go ahead and shoot and uh, before I do I think I'm gonna talc them up here um, you know, there's there's certain there's certain things you can do when you're uh, shooting with your with your uh, rest. It's to put some talc on the uh, back bag. Uh, the front bag it's got it's got the um, 
checkering, so it's really not going to make any substantial difference. But that'll that'll keep the stock from uh, chafing against the bag and sticking, and that that can cause that can cause release issues. So back to business. We'll get this going and uh, see how it shoots. Top left target. snappy round is getting out there you know I actually saw that bullet going down I saw it dropping right into the uh, target. I love this little rifle. Uh, it's got such a crisp trigger. Browning did a nice job with it. Very, very crisp trigger. Um, and the, the sight picture I'm getting out of my loophole rimfire scope is absolutely superb. The uh, I can I can put a I can make a pizza out of that. Um, small target down there and see a white quadrant around each side of the uh, cross here. It's absolutely beautiful. Don't ever think that you have to have high power for good precision accuracy because you know it's a matter of relative positioning on a uh, scope. If when you have when you have the uh, when you have the scope Centered on a target is centered on a target. It doesn't have to be. Uh... Doesn't have to be highly magnified. Four power. That's, that's plenty. If that were a, if that were a uh, woodchuck's eye, I'd be, I'd hold the crosshair right right on his eye. I'd be able to see it very easily. doing here. So I gotta turn my socks. This is this is red sock season so I'm... well that's not too bad for that's not too bad for promotional grade ammo is it? Um, you know target grade ammo is quite another thing but this is this is hunting grade ammo and it's promotional it came 350 to the box I think it was I bought it. I bought it a long time ago. We're out. Okay. Now we're going to try out the um, polar biathlon. Now I'm not exactly I'm not exactly sure where this is going to print because um, it's been a while since I had the rifle sighted in for um, standard velocity ammunition. I presume this is probably going to drop a little lower by rights, should at least. Um, but at 50 yards, you know, and, and I theoretically, you know, you can sight a you can sight in a uh, 22 for optimum range out to maybe 60, 65 yards. But in realistic terms, you know, 50 yards is a long ways. Um, you know that that's a uh, 
That's that's a very long throw for an amateur uh, with a baseball. That's a that's a hike. So you know that's uh, that's 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 what 22s are all about. Um, no sense in trying to extend the range of a 22 rim fire. It's not that's not what they're for. They're for if having fun for plinking. Um, and for occasional shooting, uh, you know, you can, you can, you know, squirrels are not high up in a tree, you know. Uh, it's, it's a pretty simple thing to bring a squirrel down. And rabbits, when, by the time you see a rabbit, you're inside, you're inside 25 or 30 yards. I mean, they're pretty well camouflaged. So, uh, and, and you really shouldn't be using a, a rimfire 22 on, a, on an animal as large as a woodchuck any farther than 50 or 60 yards. Uh, it's just not going to have enough impact to uh, do a quick kill. I'm going to go for that center target now. I'm going to hold. Um, I'm going to hold dead center and see how these drop. Printing way off at uh, about eight o'clock. And another thing, you know, uh, you have to understand that with with 22 rim fires, the lubricants that are used from one brand to another. Now, the previous brand I was using, the CCIs have a. It's, it's like a hard. Uh, it's, it's like a hard wax. It's probably like a carnauba wax or something on it. Um, this this lubricant is more of a greasy lubricant, so it takes a little while for the lubricant to change in the barrel and uh, for things to settle down. So the first the first few rounds you can expect to uh, be a little bit uh, a little bit open until until the bar barrel gets conditioned. Doesn't take long. I've got um, tadpoles over here watching me, I think, and a couple of couple of small frogs. So this is nature's country out here. It's really nice. Piece of uh, wilderness. There's no vehicles going by. Now I'm not concerned about the point of impact, I'm just illustrating the difference in accuracy. And these naturally are cruising out at a little bit uh, slower speed. Um, I detect that they're actually, these are, these are um, polar biathlon and I'm, I'm detecting that these things are audibly that these are breaking the speed, uh, the speed uh, sound barrier. So these are, I believe, supersonic. Uh, they're not. Uh, I haven't chronographed them, um, and there's no um, there's no information on the box that uh, what their what their speed is. But you know, remember that in biathlon shooting, the idea is to be able to knock those uh, black uh, knock those black centers out of the uh, target. So uh, those are steel those are steel centers. So they want to make sure they hit them with a good wallop. And I would suspect that these are probably that way. Um, but these have that supersonic snap to them. Not as, not as much as the others, but... Yeah, these are starting to settle down now a little bit. I like say it takes a few to kind of uh, wash out the old lubricant. And this 
there's a lot of wives tales that go around about this stuff though too you know that you have to shoot you know uh, 150 rounds between changes and that's absolutely not so not so at all um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do 10 on a different target um, Actually, what I can do, I'll aim at the uh, top of that diamond uh, just to see if these have settled down. This will bring that. This will bring that um, point of impact up by about uh, two inches, but you'll be able to see a different group. Well, you're gonna have an awful lot of fun when uh, you got a 22. Um, very relaxing. You don't have to. You don't have to wear uh, a lot of ear protection or anything like that. Although, if you're shooting some of the high velocity stuff, you know, 17 caliber and stuff, you definitely want to be uh, using hearing protection because that stuff can that stuff can hurt you. Um, all right, I'm going to see if I can go for the top of that diamond. Uh, I'm going to hold the top of the center diamond. Should bring the uh, I should bring the shots up about two and a half inches, I think. This uh, table, my portable bench here, is not, it's not the steadiest, it's not a, a concrete bench by any means. But it's not bad for field use. No, oh, I just got a breeze to come up. I'll hold off a second. Suspect that left to right business is the breeze that's coming up. It's it's blowing. If I still got a cigar going here. No. People have asked me what kind of cigars I smoke. Well, I like the real good stuff. Uh, Now it looks like one of those up and down winds. It's funny, that tree over there, the, uh, the birch leaves are wiggling around really fiercely. And that oak tree over there is just as still as could be. So it's, uh, it's, it's typical. That's why, uh, That's why you have to always keep in mind that whatever you're shooting down range is not necessarily the same as where you're sitting. Now I see the uh, Aspen leaves, there's a quaking aspen right behind uh, that target, and that those leaves are 
Those are quaking. They're jittering around. That's it. That's it. Uh, yeah, that ammo is not bad. Um, it's certainly it's certainly good for uh, the sport that it was designed for. Let's try this wolf ammo. Now this has been around a long time. I've had this, like I say, I've had this for going on close to 20 years now. Um, I got it for a uh, Seiko rifle that uh, that I had years ago. Um, the little thumbnail that shows my image on my website, uh, that's that rifle, um, which I don't have anymore. It was a nice rifle. Um, this has been around so long, the, uh, the lubricant has turned that, uh, that chalky color. But I suspect it's probably still going to shoot. And uh, my guess is that Lapoy uses a um, Vitivori powder. It has kind of a sweet uh, smell to it. It's a little different than uh, the powders that you find in domestic ammo. Let's give them a go and see. Well, I'm going to hold at the bottom of that same diamond. Now, I don't know what these, the lubricant may have dried up altogether, so we'll see how they go. Certainly subsonic. Nice consistent sound to them. Wind from my back now. Ricochet on that one. Okay. I'll tell you what. That wolf is awesome ammo. Um, you know, once once the barrel settles down with this lubricant and it's going, uh, this this stuff is this stuff is uh, MOA all the way. Uh, this is this is half inch groups or less at 50 yards, and that means one inch group uh, translates to one inch groups at uh, 100 yards. This stuff is awesome, and because it's subsonic, uh, you d it doesn't crash through the sound barrier uh, at 65 or so yards, and then start fluttering and wandering off target. The high velocity stuff, those 1280, uh, 1260 uh, muzzle velocity, I have tested those out to. Uh, 65 to 75 yards and around about 65 yards or so is when they run into trouble and that's when the accuracy really opens up uh, and that's typical of that's typical of any high velocity 22 ammo uh, that's why you don't want to have you don't want to have hypersonic ammo because that uh, that crossing of the sound barrier the transonic uh, point 
occurs actually closer in closer to you because those bullets are uh, less they have uh, they have less weight um, they're they're lighter they're not as uh, aerodynamic they don't have the same high ballistic coefficient so as a result uh, you know the, the transonic uh, occurrence can be even less than 50 yards it's sometimes it's inside 35 yards which kind of that, that defeats the whole purpose of having a high velocity uh, ammo. If you want to know a little bit more about uh, 22, uh, 22s, please watch my two videos on uh, the 22 that I uh, did a couple of years ago, and that'll give you a really good idea about uh, understanding what occurs with uh, transonic flight. You know, when that that crossing of the recrossing of the sound barrier uh, is the uh, the bullet is slapped in the back by um, its own sound its own sound wake. Like a like a boat's wake. I have five more here. I'm just gonna throw them in and put them. See if I can put them in that same target. Let's try it out. Again, I, I'm reminding you. This is this is a four power scope. This is you know. There's absolutely no issue here. Power is not power is not anything to do with group size. Um, that's that's one of the biggest that's that's one of the biggest uh, pieces of baloney going around out there. It has nothing to do with your group size. Uh, people who shoot the CMP matches and NRA matches and everything with iron sights, do you think that they do you think that they're using magnification? They just they naked eye. It's one power uh, and over iron sights. It has nothing to do with the size of the sights either. It has to do with the it has to do with the relative positioning of the sights each time. Okay. Well, you can see what that stuff is capable of, uh, even with, even with a variable breeze. Um, you know, blowing it off course. I, I'm inside of, uh, I'm inside one of those one-inch squares, very easily, uh, no problem whatsoever. I have one shot slightly to the right, uh, one shot slightly to the left, but the rest of it, the rest of it's cutting out that, cutting out that paper beautifully. So that's about it. Um, I want to uh, now. I want to just show you a little bit about uh, having some fun practicing. Now that I've got the rifle sighted in, I know what it's doing. Uh, now we can now we can have some fun with it and uh, do a little bit of real shooting. Okay. You know, everybody likes to have nice, lively, reactive targets, and. Uh, I don't have I don't have access to uh, a lot of soda bottles to uh, start breaking up because I don't have stock in one of those companies. But um, what I do have, and I love to use this, this is a resettable target. It's uh, it's simply five discs. Uh, four of them you, you shoot the four bottom ones up. And when uh, when it's time to reset them, you knock them all back down with the top one. Makes for a great game. I've had that uh, I've had that target for oh for probably about uh, close to 18 or 20 years and uh, I love it <coughs> you can you can set it up in any range you want and remember this is a little bit this is a little bit more challenging than uh, say cans and soda bottles because now you've got a now you've got a target which is a, a known size we're talking about having to hit a circle that's only about an inch and a half in diameter and if you're able to hit an inch and a half circle at 25 yards, you can do your own math and figure out how far out you're, you're able to shoot uh, from those given positions, whether you're shooting uh, sitting, standing, kneeling, prone, whatever you want to do. But it gives you, you know, some awesome, awesome practice. And that target, is, that target is set right now at 25 yards from me. 
So let's go ahead and pop a few. I'm going to sling up and uh, hopefully we'll be able to knock a few of them do a few of them over. Oh, miss. I was shooting biathlon. That would mean I'd have to take a lap around the uh, penalty course. There it is. Hiding behind my... Hiding behind my rosary. Here we go. Now we'll try, uh, we'll try kneeling. Lots of fun. Got to get one of these for yourself. A 22 doesn't have to be this, but a 22. That's how you practice. That's how you get good. Being able to do that means you can do it on game.
Well, that was not only a lot of fun, but it's good practice too. Um, anytime you pull the trigger, you know, you should be uh, making it for a purpose. Uh, more than just a more than just a fun aspect of it, it should be uh, it should be teaching you something, and you should be learning how to shoot a little bit better than you did the last time. Um, every time I go out to shoot, as old as I am, every time I go out to shoot, uh, I review everything that I've learned and have known, and uh, you know, uh, learning of learning of uh, any of activity like this, riding a bike and stuff. Uh, there, there are there are certain fragile things that you can easily uh, lose, so it's good to practice and don't don't rest on your laurels. Uh, get out as often as you can, and just because you were able to shoot your deer last year doesn't mean you're going to be able to get them this year if you don't go out and practice. Um, you know, muscle muscle memory is one thing, but uh, practice is quite another. As the uh, you know, there was a story of the uh, young man who. Walking along in New York City, asked a stopped and asked a woman on the corner, "How do I get to Carnegie Hall?" She says, "Practice, son. Practice. That's what it's all about." Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And God bless.